Hello, you're all very welcome to podcast four. Myself, Adam Wilson, and on the other line we have again Niels Nuremberger, um, for podcast for podcast two for number two. Um, you're very welcome, Niels. Thanks, Adam. Good see you again. Yeah, cheers for jumping on. Right, so for this in this podcast, the the main team is around the conjugate method how to use it, utilize an ATG and the, the dense method. We'll also be talking about Neil's recher, a recent uh, trip to Montenegro, um, which uh, he has um, some interest in training methods and some interest in uh, training experiences from it. So Niels, we'll start with the trip in Montenegro. Um, firstly, how did it come about and um, what what did you, and what was the experience like? Yeah, so I spent 10 days in Montenegro. I visited the Uncommon Success Village, uh, which Keegan has built there from last year and is still being built. Um, yeah, I spent a couple of days there together with other members of the community, um, did a lot of training, and we had good food, worked on our own projects. Um, and yeah, overall, like really good way to spend your your holidays as well. Like it's not just relaxing, but you're actually getting something done. Um, main thing was the environment for me with the other guys there. Uh, really pushed me hard in the gym and outside the gym as well um, to go to think about places that I haven't thought much about before. Uh, yeah, overall, really cool experience. I will do it again, definitely. It goes so fun. Just to give us a quick outline. Like, what were you doing? What was a typical day like? Um, like, what? How did you? How? How was it? The typical day structured, and uh, how was your training structured as well on on a on a kind of normal day over there? Yeah. So we or I usually get up between six, seven, eight, maybe eight in the morning. Um, uh, rather earlier than later because it was really hot. <laughs> um, and then got up got some movement in had had a uh, some water to drink and then went straight to the gym actually um and did a small session there uh, with everyone else everyone worked on something for the time while they were there uh, and also got some good uh yeah some ideas on what to train on i i didn't structure my training i just went to the gym see what the others did and then did what made sense to me uh, for the day um so yeah i had a quick session in the morning for me that was usually just like some light movement not very intense i'm i can't really do intensity in the morning that's just uh like my my type um and yeah practice a lot of skills as well like the juggling and handstands that that's not too intense um and then after that had a big breakfast uh lots of eggs and meat <laughs> and raw milk uh all the good stuff yeah. and yeah then for the middle of the day it was really hot like it got thir to 35 degrees celsius maybe even more on some days so we sat down in in the house we worked on our own things uh there was not much to to do else because yeah you could you could go to the gym but you would sweat <laughs> immediately as soon as you stepped out the door um but yeah, then in the afternoon, like once it cooled off a bit at 5, 6 p.m., maybe maybe 7 p.m., we got back to the gym, um, did another session. And yeah, those were the more intense sessions for me. I also got one, two PBs there. Um, I came in with a little shoulder injury, so I couldn't do everything that I wanted to do for upper body, but, but still it was really good. And then afterwards a big feast to end the day, <laughs> nice. had some good conversations with it and afterwards and yeah, went to bed. That was a normal day. Yeah. Jesus sounds like, sounds, sounds like my, my, my ideal, uh, my ideal sort of environment are uh, training, eating good food, masterminding, um, and some skills. What, what sort of PB, like you're saying you, you hit some good numbers, um, what sort of what kind of what were the biggest improvements you got over there in terms of uh, PBs? Uh, the big thing was I had a really good squat session, two two three really good squat sessions. Like I equaled my 
my last PB that that stood for uh four or five years almost. Uh, I did a 140 kg back squat and I could have gone gotten more, but then uh, we had to end the session <laughs> because something was coming up that was very unfortunate. Um, yeah, that was one thing, and then also I I never tried to do like a partial squat, Anderson squat from the pins. Um, and I did that and I got to 190 kg, which was for me, I never touched that amount of weight, maybe for a deadlift once, but no, actually not. Like it was the heaviest weight I have ever touched. <laughs> and that was really cool. Like just the energy and, and I was well recovered for every session. So I could go for it. And yeah, the others were watching and cheering me on and the <laughs> just good vibes and good energy uh high testosterone as well <laughs> which helps for sure yeah the uh, i learned also i learned to backflip as well um so that that was another pb that's not weight related but it is a pb for me nonetheless that's good no, it's, uh, it's, it's a good feat of athleticism but backflip but backflip um the anderson one is a good one and probably something i don't do enough but and i know or, you know, ATG, man, we like, you know, the full range, full range of movement in terms of just the actual connective tissue and the joints strengthening, and et cetera. But there's a lot to be said for at times having them partials, and especially with an Anderson where you're at a dead stop and you're in the pins and then you're lifting higher weights than usual. And I think, do you reckon it has good transferable to, uh, you know, starting strength acceleration? From your kind of your thoughts, your what you what do you believe? Do you think there's much carryover? Yeah, definitely. Like it's it's very joint angle specific. Yeah. Um, so it really overloads that that position for the knee and hip that you have in a in a sprinting side or in sprinting in general, in running, uh, also for jumping. Um so you can you really use that take uh take it for yourself and apply and yeah get the advantages from there you can really overload that partial um rep as well that that partial range which you couldn't do with a normal squat because you you cannot move it up um but if you just take the partial range you can overload it uh, you can really excite your nervous system you can get your body's uh, your tendon your muscles you can get them used to this amount of weight um and yeah actually right after the lift i felt stronger than before the lift just it gave me that feeling of yeah i'm now i can like i can lift the world now <laughs> um so it's a mental thing as well to to do just a partial rep but because it's partially you can go for a lot more weight and uh yeah it's it's a very very good style to to implement from time to time and yeah we can already um draw the line towards conjugate method because um there I, I want to rotate the lifts i cannot maybe max out on a on a back squat every session but if i do like a variation of the back squat and like the anderson squat i can max out one week on the back squat and then next week i can max out on the anderson squat and i can even put it just before my training or maybe the day before a match and i will recover in time and i will feel excited and uh, powerful and strong i can take that momentum into the next session yeah you could actually use it as post-activation potentiation which you know just exciting the muscles prior they're ready to go and i think the thing about the anderson and partial squats is that there's very little muscle damage because it's all it's, it's concentric based i think like you know as atg coaches you know with it's there's not that like we're against partials or and like it but i think you know it's the quantity it's the amount that you do so at time to time and i think in particularly towards the latter end of the season i think partials are a great tool do you know what i mean as you says less muscle damage you're lifting your central nervous system is getting a high high stimulus and you feel strong you feel good but like with going on to the conjugate firstly it's something i know you're, you've been implementing the last 12 months i know keegan keegan smith who famously uh managed the roosters to unbeaten season uh really good stats there with kind of defensive work and one of the components what he put it down to one of them was the use of conjugate system uh could you explain like to to, 
to the listeners firstly what it is and how you've been implementing it. Yeah, so the conjugate training method is it's popularized by Louis Simmons, Westside Barbell. That's a powerlifting gym, powerlifting coach from the United States. Um, and he popularized it. He got insane results. He is probably the strongest gym in the world, produced many world record holders. And yeah, so it's it's a periodization system for strength training. So how do you program your strength training in a season? You don't just throw exercises at someone, but yeah, you, you have to structure it at, in some way or another. And there are different ways of how you can periodize it. But yeah, this is one way to implement um, different aspects of, of the strength curve. So you have max, max uh, strength days, you have days where you have a dynamic lift, uh, a fast lift, and then you have days where you have uh, like hypertrophy, a lot of reps, more blood blood flow work, more recovery as well, or GPP as well. If you call it that way, that's also a big big part there. And yeah, so that's just shortly about the background, and it's also been used with with athletes uh well powerlifters are athletes as well but uh team sport athletes i mean or or like uh yeah traditional sports let's say and it's a good way to to um train all the different strength qualities and not like have it as like the traditional way you would periodize is in a block periodization so you have one block of just maximum strength one block of just speed strength one block of just hypertrophy but that has many disadvantages especially in team sports where you have to perform almost every week every weekend so you can't afford not to train max strength or or uh, the power power uh yeah based lifts or speed lifts you cannot afford not to train it um so yeah, it's a system where you have all of that in one week. Um, and yeah, the way it works is that you pick one exercise that you want to um, that you want to train for the week. You don't train exactly the same lift every week because you will get fried and you can't improve every lift every week uh, for a long amount of time, especially with advanced lifters. Um, so yeah the idea is to rotate the exercises one week uh yeah. you you can uh, max out as i said earlier on a back squat the next week you can max out on a front squat maybe you can max out on a box squat you can max out on on a partial squat like the anderson there are many ways to, to go um yeah so it's very interesting in my for from my experience and now i've tried it a bit as well also with with the athletes that i train um that yeah it's i can train the lifts i can get stronger i can also get faster in season and if i need it i can also gain some mass yeah no good explanation there i think as it says with the with, with the standard way and it's still done it's where you have the hypertrophy block and then you have the strength block and you have the power by the time you get into the strength the, like like you could, you're losing, you could be losing some of the hypertrophy gains and the strength block or the speed gains. Where with the conjugate, you have the combination of each quality within the block. And another advantage, I I think, is that you know it's with the Russian literature, it's it's out there. The max effort where you're lifting over eighty five to ninety percent of one RM is the most effective way of getting stronger. Right. So if you're not lifting at that range for a block or two, you're going to lose some strength gains but the width the conjugate is you're able to the, the, the but the caveat to that is how can you lift at such high intensities you know week after week without obviously burn out without the, out the law of accommodation as you say where you're just the body gets used to a certain lift and like i think the big point there is like the the variation and the rotation of lifts are are, are so important you know as you says it's each week you hit you hit a certain number and then next week is you're changing the lift so you're constantly keeping your body fresh the stimulus fresh as well how have you implemented the conjugate with like in terms of have you used some atg principles with it have you used some dense uh methods with the, your conjugate and like so give us a kind of maybe a breakdown 
of a, of a training session or a kind of training week, um, short training week on how you use with yourself or, and the athletes? Yeah, so how I structure it, like how I structure every session, if it's conjugate or not, is that I start with short range work, like very heavily influenced ATG style, of course, um, get the necessary tissues warm and muscles that I want to use later. Um, do some light long range stuff to get everything ready to get the ranges ready that I need. Um, and then I, I get into the main, main lifts almost immediately. Um, and there the, like, I believe the dense training method and conjugate, they go along really well. Okay. Um, like especially originally the dynamic effort days that Louis Simmons used, he did short amounts of rest, like he did eight, nine, ten sets of let's say two or three reps, and then had a sixty second rep, uh, sixty second rest. That's almost dense. <laughs> uh, it's very high density training, and with the dense training system, we just uh, yeah simplify it and make it even easier to program and to to enjoy, um, and to progress as well. Um, for the max lifts, I use it as well. Like we can we can ramp within a dense set, and that is time efficient. And I can still take an extra minute before I hit that new PB. Maybe that's that's all right. But I I have a short session. I still get a high quality of lifts because I don't have that. I cannot uh, go too heavy. Otherwise, I wouldn't complete the block. Um, but I can go heavy enough to get the stimulus and to feel good and to maybe even at the end hit a, a new PB in, in that specific lift. Um, so yeah, that goes along really well. Um, of course, hypertrophy as well. Like I can just put a lot of volume into 10 or five minutes or even 20 if I have to, um, if I do 10 reps every minute. So the dense system is probably the main thing for me now. Um, especially when using conjugate um, and then the accessory lifts that I do with all athletes, they are all the, like the ATG main lifts, let's say. So um, the standards that I want to hit with through the full range with RDLs, with ATG split squats, with seated good mornings, also Nordics, um, especially for field-based athletes. This is an important uh, quality uh, an important lift. Um, yeah, and I end the day, I end the training days with, yeah, long range stretch strength, let's call it that, um, to, yeah, to to have to keep the mobility that I need and to even improve on the flexibility um, and get get some tissue change as well. Yeah, th this is a normally structured day. And then I, I like what the main lift is changes from, from day to day so it can be that i'm ramping towards a, a new 1rm maybe um or it can be that i'm doing a 10 by 2 10 by 3 just for speed or a 5 by 3 5 d3 for a speed lift and i can also hit a pb there maybe if i'm using a power clean for example which is always a speed lift um then I can still try to improve every week or use a different Olympic lifting variation as well. Um, I can play around with bands, mostly with bands. Some some people have chains, but it's not really uh, that that popular, at least the people that I work with and where they go to the gyms. Um, yeah, and then depending on how, how often they train, um, if it's four days a week, I can do twice lower, twice upper body with max reps, um, max lift, and then a dynamic effort and add some hypertrophy at the end. Uh, most people that I work with, they train three times per week. So I have a uh, one lower body max strength focus day, one upper body uh, focus day, and then a full body dynamic effort day. Um, and that works really well. And they recover well. So when you have a dynamic day, because it's, as you said earlier, it's concentric, focused, emphasized. So the recovery is is much easier. Um, and I can do that towards the end of the week bef before a game day, maybe even. Mm. Yeah, 
that that's how a typical week would look like. Yeah, I think like the first, I think I like I like the the, the training session itself structure, um, and I think the so you do the, the the max effort lift at the start, then you're going on to you know your your ATG stuff in the in the middle. That's your kind of let's say accessory work, and then you have some long range mobility, flexibility, and strength work at the end. But it's a nice way to end the session in terms of let's say your Jefferson curls, your reverse Nordics would be kind of in there. You're kind of that that sort of kind of pancake stretches, um, and then just out of interest, how do you have you done the? Would you? What I've been playing around with, um, and I've, I've found really beneficial, especially for my lower body lifts, um, going with the ATG split squats, doing a, a, a like a four to five, four sets of five reps each side, and going up to a decent weight. Have you tried? Are you doing your ATG split squats prior to your squat sessions? At the moment, have you tried? Have you experimented that out of interest? Uh, I've done it, I think, but that's a while ago. I'm not doing it currently. Mm. Um, but yeah, it can definitely work to to go heavy on a on like a accessory lift or make the accessory lift the main lift. That's also one way that I like about ATG as well, and you can implement it in in the conjugate system as well to make the split squat the main lift that that's yeah. definitely possible um but i've i've played around more with um doing heavy like a patrick or a reverse step up polyquin step up before this the like a heavy back squat um i usually treat the split squat as a main lift, lift in general so i do it on a different day Mm. But yeah, no, I haven't tried tried a heavy split squat before the back squat. I just think, yeah, I think it's a real cheat code for 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 squatting. Um, prior, mm. it opens the hips up beautifully. It just came to me there. Um, and see, the, and I like the structure. I think that's a good way, especially in season. Your Monday, the start of the week, you have your lower stuff. You know, your your heavy leg stuff. Uh, the the let's say your the day between or whatever, you have your upper body. And then you finish off with the kind of faster movements. With the dynamic day, is it just you have that would be your Olympic lift style, your power based as a let's say 10 D2 or 8 8 by 2. Um, that would be kind of your main lift on the dynamic day, would it? Yeah. I would do a like a bigger lift for lower body, which mostly is like an Olympic variation. But could be also like a speed deadlift or a banded deadlift or a banded squat, for example. And I would st still do like a dynamic uh, effort lift for upper body, like a speed bench or a push press, for example. That goes really well with with the Olympic lifts, of course. Um, yeah, so I would do for upper and lower both a dynamic effort um, and then maybe do one, two accessory exercises. Um I don't want to have the session too long. Like in general, I like short sessions, 45 minutes to one hour uh, and then get out of the gym and enjoy the rest of your day. Um, but yeah, for main lifts, for lower body, mostly it's Olympic variations, Olympic lifting variations, but really depends on the athlete as well. Yeah, no, Daddy, good. And then um, what sort of results, like have you noticed much increases with your, you've been doing this kind of the last 12 months. Have you noticed so kind of what what are the kind of main benefits and gains you've gotten from from this style well i i increased on every lift <laughs> uh, i increased true. my numbers that that's the main thing like yeah i've gotten stronger for sure uh in every lift like in every rep range as well not just the one rm but like the 10 rm the 5 rm the 3 rm um or the 10 d10 the 10 d3 all these things not just the single reps um because i can rotate all the lifts and i can do something different every week i can also improve every week on on that different variation that i'm doing um and if the variation is a different lift or if the def variation is different set and rep scheme it doesn't really matter i can still get a pb every time which just feels amazing <laughs> everyone knows the feeling um, especially when it's not grindy, but you can just do it and you feel like you can do more next week. Um, that's even more powerful, I believe, than if you really have to grind it out and then spend the rest of the week in bed. 
that's not really uh productive especially for athletes um yeah and i've also noticed that i gained a bit in size but that's mostly due to my <laughs> to my eating um but i've also gotten a bit faster and and stronger for for rugby what i'm playing at the moment um go uh, so, just... yeah i can yeah Sorry, no, no, it's, you know, it's, it's, I think, as it says, the proof is in the pudding there in terms of the numbers don't lie. And if you're not just in the main lift, but across the board, your numbers are going up. So it shows you the effect in this, the program. I think, look, as it says, Louis Simmons said this with powerlifters, but like numerous disciplines, whether it's NFL, rugby, um, to name just a couple of sports have been implemented this and gotten savage results. I think a lot of SNC coaches are probably a little bit scared of the max effort stuff and that's and the very and the rotation of lifts because of muscle soreness they're a little bit probably put off doing this in season but i think look you know keegan smith has you know famously you know the results that he's gotten with his team and there's countless other results um you touched on as well even yourself i know yes you're, you're 32 and like you've implemented obviously this to conjugate also with 80 i call this kind of ATG conjugate with an ATG and dense elements. That's how I kind of I describe it. Uh, um, so you've imp implemented this system. You've been doing the ATG stuff. You've been doing the real movement stuff, which was uh, with, with Keegan Smith uh, over the last couple of years. You know, just over yourself, you know, as a rugby player, you're playing in Division One, the top league, National League in, in Germany. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of what in terms of the speed um progress have you gotten you know over the last couple of years yeah well this year with with this style that i'm trying the the hybrid conjugate atg dance <laughs> as you call it we have to come up with a better name. yeah uh, but i've gotten the biggest gains um in the gym and outside the gym like i feel the fastest i feel the strongest i feel the most um robust as well um also flexibility has increased a lot um yeah i've i've always been one of the faster guys in my teams i played football earlier in in my life for a long time but and then switched to rugby uh, i was like let's say top 10 top 5 of faster uh players but i was never the fastest and I was <laughs> so I'm not the smallest anymore and also I'm especially for <clears throat> for acceleration uh for the first 20 to 40 meters I'm one of I, I'm probably the fastest on my team currently um so yeah just the strength that I have um from doing this style of training and also the like the power that I have it's not just strength but you also need for not just for first five to 10 meters but the next 30 meters afterwards that's not just strength anymore um so yeah there, there i have seen big improvements so yeah and i feel like i can still get better there so i i haven't hit the ceiling yet um which is really cool like uh, i'm i'm really looking forward to do the next couple of months and years and to see how it will translate to to the field uh, daddy and i think look I think you can't ignore them results. Like, you know, it's different if you have a, a, a youth development athlete that's maybe in, you know, in the late teens, 17, 18, 19, that makes such good progress. But, you know, you're 32, Niels, and now you're in the kind of top 10 in terms of, let's say, acceleration over, you know, 20, 40 meters, as it says, or 20, shorter distance. But now you're, you're up there, right up there. And it's only in the last couple of years. So you kind of have to, like, the, the results are quite evident then that obviously it's, it has to be the training. It's not that you got a, a you know a, a, a great a, a growth spurt or anything like that. It's obviously you're doing something different over the last couple of years. And uh, the fact that you know with your age, it shows you that this is working. And as I said, what I like about this, it's implementing a couple of really good methods. You know, we're all big on the ATG. You know, from from new you know weak links, that long range, having the strength and flexibility in all different ranges bulletproof areas and athleticism but then adding another layer of the likes of the dense getting stronger and then another layer as well with the conjugate then with the rotational lifts with the max effort and the faster stuff as well i think it's i think it's a perfect perfect blend uh to be honest with you Niels. 
Uh, if anyone wants, Niels, look, I think we've covered some really good point, uh, some good topics. I know, Niels, you're doing, you have this system, you, like you're doing this system, you're doing it with a lot of rugby players. Um, if, let's say, an athlete out there wants to try and implement um, the sort of program, the style that you've, you've kind of hybrided together and come up with, um, where can they reach out? Where can they get in contact if, as I says, if they're looking for more information or I know you do some online programs as well. Where is the best way they can reach out for you? Uh, to, the, to connect with me, the easiest is via Instagram. Um, I use the name athletic.coach.niels. Um, that's to get in touch with me. Um, to find out more about Conjugate System, that's like there's a lot of resources on YouTube. Very knowledgeable coaches who explain it. That's the way I learn it as well. Like there's... YouTube is the best resource. It can also be the worst resource, but if you use it uh, wisely, you will learn everything you need uh, and in the system as well. Um, ATG system, that's Ben Patrick, knees over toes guy. Um, it's gotten huge popularity over the last one, two years, and it's still growing. And I can only recommend checking it out and testing it for a couple of months or staying on longer and learning the system, learning the movements, learning the principles behind. That's that's the main thing. It's not even about the movements. The, the principles are what make the difference, I think. And then if you look for the community and to look for how other coaches are using this style of training, um, for me, that's uncommon success. And that's also what you are a member of. And that's that for me, that's the environment that I need to, uh, that I'm looking for to to improve, to learn, to get the input, and to see what others are doing, what's working, and to to yeah to get better and to I I learn different training system there as well, not just conjugate method, but like the dance training system is that's where I got that from from Keegan, yeah. and. Yeah, so if you're looking for more than just being a good coach, but being a good person as well, <laughs> and yeah. looking to improve your future, uh, that that's the place to go. Yeah, great. So I, I think it'd be remiss not to kind of add just to, to what you said there, especially about, I think the, the, the resources, yeah, ATG, as you said, Ben Patrick, and Conjugate there at YouTube, and obviously the West Side, credit was credit's due. And then um, I yeah. think just to finish on with, with, with Uncommon Success, and you know, obviously we wouldn't be talking here if it wasn't, uh, Keegan Smith has built an unbelievable community there. So, you know, if you're a coach that wants to level up and be around like-minded individuals, learn about all different types of training programs, the ins and outs, whether it's dense, neurotyping, muscle building, speed, power, endurance. To be honest with you, I think it's 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 the pl place to go. And if you're an athlete as well, I'd uh, definitely check it out. It's 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 uh, well worth um, looking into. And it's unbelievable value. I think that's a really good way to end it, Niels. Niels, a pleasure as always. And uh, thanks for jumping on. Yes, thanks, Adam, for inviting me. Cheers. Be in touch. All the best.